Stop spending a ton of time, energy, and resources that's gonna be gone forever before you finish watching this video because I can guarantee you that you are currently overspending on one of the biggest expenses in your business. What is that expense? It's to acquire new customers, new clients, and new revenue. And most businesses make this as one of the biggest mistakes because they do it the wrong way. And I'm gonna be sharing with you the proven processes on how I've been able to generate millions of new revenue for my internal companies and also at the same time, what is the unknown hidden leverage factors that you can use to be able to increase your customers, your new clients, and new revenue into your business more than you could ever imagine. Now, when you watch until the very end, you're gonna be getting the exact frameworks and in-depth resource guide on bensonson.com through the Digital Marketing University that's gonna walk you through step-by-step -step an expanded post on exactly what you're gonna watch below, and it's gonna show you how to incorporate new revenue and new clients and new customers into your business. What I want you to do first is I want you to comment below and let me know how important do you think new revenue and new customers are for your business? You can just type yes, you can type your comments, any questions that you have throughout the video. Ah, how wonderful is it to be able to get new customers and new revenue into your business? It's almost like the lifeblood of every business's dream is to be able to get new customers and new clients every single day, every single week, every single month. And yet, the most successful businesses on the planet Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, you name them. They know that the new customers and new revenue is just a means to an end. Now at the start of every new business that you're doing, whether online or offline, we always want new customers, new revenue, and new clients in the business. It makes sense. But from my experience, why I'm telling you that new revenue, new customers is the least important is because you wanna always focus on once you have 100 or 1,000 of your true customers, raving fans, of your business that love you, they spend money with you, they refer people to you, they're getting a great experience out of your product or your service. Now you wanna focus on retention and reoccurring revenue and ascension, which we get in another video. But I just want you to keep in mind that it's better to retain and build and make more of your existing customers successful instead of trying to chase new revenue at a certain point. If you're charging a higher price point, you don't need as many clients or customers. But example is that you want to have at least 100 minimum to a thousand true raving fans and customers in your business. That's from my experience what's worked extremely well. I focus on doing a hundred or a thousand and depending on the business. If you're doing an e-commerce product, a thousand customers, focus on giving them the best experience, the best value, and also helping them achieve the most success that they want or solving their problems. That's gonna help you achieve success in the long term. This is what the biggest businesses do. They understand that once they get new customers and new revenue, and they know it's important, but once they have that, they focus on how do we maximize on that and being able to build more of those things. How do we add more products and services? How do we have the customer success team to make sure that they're successful? How do we retain them? How do we make them lifelong customers instead of just a one-time buyer? The most important thing for you to do is to get clear on who your ideal audience is and then focus on communicating with them, adding more value, and being able to build that 100 to 1,000 true raving fans of customers and clients. The biggest expense that we both have in our businesses is being able to acquire a new customer or client. And when we've built up a loyal base, then what we can do is we, can not, we don't have to focus on spending all those marketing dollars to attract all these people. We can focus on cultivating the existing ones in our business. One of the biggest reasons why most businesses fail, and I want you to write this down right now, if you pull out your phone, your notepad, whatever a piece of paper that's in front of you, most businesses spend all their resources, time, money, energy, trying to get the first time buyer, and they don't focus on spending all that to build a relationship and cultivate it and add value to get a lifelong customer. If you get a first time buyer in your mind and you get a long time buyer, the way that you approach them is very different. The way that you service them is different. The way that you treat them, how you add value, how you set the expectations in the buying relationship is completely different. And this is extremely important online where they don't know anything about you, especially they don't trust, they don't have the relationship. They don't have anything with you online. They're seeing a website. So it's being able to clearly articulate that and having that mindset right from the get-go when you're trying to build your new revenue in your business. Here's a question for you to think about from a mentor of mine, Keith Cunningham. How big would your business be if you still had every single customer and client that ever tried you? The answer, if you're just like most businesses, your business would be two, three, four, five, maybe even 10 times bigger than it is right now. And especially if you're starting a business online, 
Guaranteed, you wanna focus on getting the right customers, servicing them right, treating them with respect, adding value to them, and being able to cultivate that in the long term. I want you to be aware of one of the biggest challenges that all businesses of varying sizes face, including the Fortune 500. When we're trying to build new customers and new revenue into our business, we're essentially trying to influence and persuade a brand new stranger to take their hard earned money out of their wallet and spend it with us. The question really is, I'm gonna show you too, is how do we overcome this gap that involve, is, in, is, is in between our business, your business, and the new customers and the strangers as well. So how do we do that, right? Now, one of the things I want you to keep in mind is this core principle. I want you to write this down right now. And when you understand this and you're able to clearly see it and articulate it to your cost, potential customers, then you'll be able to increase your new revenue. And this principle is the higher the price of your product or service as compared to the value that they see and perceive to the problems and also the solutions that they want in their life, the higher that is, the more friction and exponentially harder it is to be able to take their hard-earned money and buy that product or service. So for example, let's say this left hand right here you can see is the price of your product or your service. And this could be $100, it could be $1,000, it could be $10,000, $100,000, it doesn't matter if you're B2C, if you're if business to business, it doesn't matter. This is the price and right here, this is the value that your, the strangers, the target audience perceives. In the middle right here is the gap. And our whole goal is to be able to clear up the gap. The closer and closer it gets, the less doubt, the less friction, the less resistance that your target audience has in buying your product or service. Subconsciously and consciously as well, your target audience, the strangers that are seeing our business online or even offline are making these decisions unconsciously in their mind. Here's what's going on in your target audience's mind. They have a ton of doubts. They have a ton of skepticisms about your business. They don't understand your business. They, everything's very vague. The more these are built up in their mind, the less likely they're gonna spend money in your business. One of the biggest questions that target audiences ask before they invest money is, they try to compare how much money they made throughout their, their basically their income at their job or through the business, and they try to justify that with what they're trying to spend with your business. And so they think about, okay, I worked 100 hours to be able to make, let's say, $2,000 or $3,000 a month. How should I spend the two to $3,000 a month, 100 hours of my life, and buy the product or service? That's one of the big things. They compare the amount of time it took for them to earn the money. If you're able to address this and be able to answer it, then you'll be able to much better position to be able to really close this gap and close this chasm that's in between your business and your target audience. Here's the first strategy that you can use to be able to build new revenue and new customers in your business. One of the worst ways and most costly ways to be able to do this is trying to convince strangers on the value of your business. What we wanna do is ask ourselves, who already has the trust, the relationship, the access to your target audience? I want you to do that as the first step. I want you to take the piece of paper that's in front of you or your phone, I want you to write down right now who already has access to your target audience. I want you to look at the influencers, I want you to look at social platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and then at the same time I want you to research websites, I want you to research blogs, I want you to research anybody and everyone that already have the target audience. They're already communicating with your target audience and they're already uh, being able to communicate and demonstrate value. They already built that community of people that you want to reach. And then we're going to use that and leverage it to be able to build our new customers and new revenue. We're able to build that affinity together with them and be able to be successful together. So that's the first step. Make that list. Go on Google. Type in whatever your audience is. Type in the blogs. Type in websites. Or do this on Excel sheet. I recommend this. You go on Excel. And I had to do this internally as well. I look at the websites, all the social platforms, build it out, each tab on Excel sheet, list out at least 25 to 30, 40, 50 of these on each specific category. And then the next step is we're gonna prepare an email in a way to be able to communicate and reach out to these people, these influencers, these websites, these podcasts, and all the people here to be able to build that relationship and build a partnership with them. That's really the second core step. Strategy number one to be able to build new revenue customers in our business to convince these strangers is to not convince strangers at all. The worst thing to do and the most costly way is being able to shout and tell them how great your business and your product or services, which is what most businesses end up making the mistake of. What you should do is ask yourself the question, who already has the relationship, who already has the trust, who already has the value built, and who already has that community 
and the relationship with your target audience. Now, this is a question that you ask yourself, what I want you to do on the piece of paper that's in front of you or your phone, you pull it out. I want you to write down and I want you to start an Excel doc using Google Sheets for Google Docs. I want you to lay out for every category who already has that attention of your target audience. Who are the influencers? If you go on the social platforms on Facebook, on those Facebook pages, if you go on YouTube, the people are YouTube channels and they're really talking about it to your audience or you go on Instagram and look at the Instagram pages and all these things, who already has that affinity with them? If you look at the websites and the blogs, who already speaks to your target audience? If you look at all the different things that are all across the web and you find out who already has the affinity, you look at the podcasts as well, which is extremely, one of the things that people don't know about is podcasts is a great way to be able to tap into your existing audience base without even having one on your own. So that's one of the things you wanna do. Build a podcast list, build a website list, build a social platform list from YouTube, Facebook. If you're in B2B, LinkedIn. If you're in YouTube, the same thing. Build another one for website and blogs. Build one on other communities, other websites, and build a list. What you're gonna find is at least, you're gonna see 50 to 100 of these that already have, they've done the work for you. They've literally spent hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars and also the amount of years that they've taken to be able to invest in your target audience that you can just leverage off of them, you can work with them, you can partner up with them to be able to reach your target audience without having to spend the same amount of money and also the same amount of time to do it. So that's why the first step is to do that. The second step we wanna do is wanna figure out what is the best way to connect with these influencers, with the people that already have this trust. Two of the best ways that I've found is you wanna be able to, especially the ones that are high value, they look like they have a big brand or a big website, is you wanna make sure that you prepare an email, and in the email, you wanna prepare a video, and in the, in the video, if that doesn't work, you'll follow up with a direct mail piece, especially if you know their address. Now, what you wanna do in these three steps, so the core of this, and even phone calls as well, to add this up, these four core ways, you wanna make sure this is a sequence similar to how you would prepare an email sequence to reach out to somebody to build that relationship. I wanna say something like, something simple. Hey, John, Julie, you know, I'm a big fan of your channel. I'm a big fan of your Instagram page or your Facebook page, whatever it is. I'm a big fan of that. I've been following you for X amount of time and I know you're adding so much value to your target audience. You've been helping them. You're so awesome at doing this specific thing. And what I wanna do is I wanna share with you, you know, this is what I have, this is who I am, you know, I've been following you. I just wanna discuss with you if there's a potential way for us to work together to be able to really add value to the same target audience. You know, I serve the same audience that you serve and I wanna be able to add value to them as well. I wanna, at the same time, of course, build my brand, but I wanna add value to you. How can I do that? The first thing I wanna approach them is how can you give, not how can you take? Because most people, what they focus on doing is they have a taking mindset. Right? They want to take, you know, how can I tap into your audience? They say things, they make mistakes on how to start a relationship that way. It's like, how can I get more of this person? How can you contribute more? You do this through the email and you want, in the email, you want to include a video that you record personally. It could be just taking your iPhone or it can be just using like a camera like this and record a video message to them saying what you're saying in the email. That's going to make it extremely powerful because you're taking the time to record a video to talk with them. You're going to be different than all the people that just send a simple email. Now, what you can do is if they don't respond to this, and it makes sense if they don't respond to you, you wanna follow up with a direct mail or you wanna follow up with a phone call and you wanna be able to reach out, just follow up at the same time. Follow up is one of the biggest things that you need to do in order to cultivate these relationships and potential partnerships so that you can save a ton of time and money. Now, a ton of people that tell me it takes them a week, it takes them a month, it depends on how big the website is and so many variables if they're willing to help you, work with you, if, they want to if you wanna advertise on their site, and all these things, it takes more time to be able to build these relationships, right? So you wanna start off on the right foot by contributing, but at the same time you understand that it takes time to build these. And you wanna make sure, even if it takes months, it's still worth it, why? Because they've already taken years and thousands and hundreds of thousands of their own money to build the relationship with their audience. So you wanna leverage that, it's obviously gonna take more time, but it'll pay off in the end. And this is something, this process that I just went through with you is one of the unknown ways to be able to do it. And people, you'd be surprised by how many businesses do the mistake of trying to build it on their own when they can leverage these people to build their own platform and be able to do it that way. So you can do this on an ongoing basis. Once you have eight to 10 of these people that you partner up with, you can build your list, you can build your brand, your business extremely fast. It could take something that takes four to five years to build, you can build it in six months to one year. That's how much time you save. 
That's why it's so valuable. Now I'm putting this ongoing strategy in place in my own business as well. As you know, on Digital Marketing University on the Bensonson.com, which is recently launched, I asked myself who already has access, who already has a relationship, the value built with my target audience, which is in the B2B space, right? Digital marketers, uh, entrepreneurs, business owners that want to grow their business online or have their teams learn digital marketing, how to grow their business online through the video that you're watching right now. And so I went on Midroll, which is one of the largest podcast advertising platforms. I reached out to them. We discussed, I said, how can I add value? Who already has podcasts that has that audience? And then they told me they're essentially an advertising platform and they connect me with some podcasts, reach out to them. We discussed on, hey, what, what kind of rates, what kind of specific channels that I wanna uh, distribute on them, what's the me messaging, 30 second, 60 second ad, and then be able to add value, drive them to the Digital Marketing University, which is essentially free, right? So I'm not even selling anything or anything on the, on the platforms. I'm giving it out as a way to be able to add value and build my personal brand. Here's one of the secret tips that you can use to be able to leverage one of the biggest e-commerce platforms in the world, amazon.com. You can, when you go on amazon.com, there's three leverage points that you can use. The first one is you can go on the specific products or books or anything that you can look at and you can see the exact wording, the copy, the languaging that your target audience is using on what they love and what they hate about a specific product or a book, or whatever they already spent money on. You can take that and you can use that language and use that copy that your target audience is using in your advertising, in the messaging that you can use to be able to reach out to these influencers and even on your website. So that's the first leverage point and it's proven copy on there as well. The second thing is what you can do is you can actually be able to see potential partners, potential distribution channels on Amazon. If let's say you have a product or a service, right? You can look at someone that sells a book speaking to your target audience and they might not have a product. You reach out to them, you can partner with them, especially if they have a book, your target audience is reading them. They already have some, they definitely have trust built with an audience that's read their book. Now the third core step is you wanna be able to ask yourself, what is that asset? What is that valuable thing that you're gonna to give to your target audience once you have eight to 10 partners? And you have a tendency, and every business does this, to be able to have some kind of product pitch or some service pitch in the 30 to 60 seconds to get them to buy or do something like that. That is the worst way to do it. You want to be able to bridge that relationship. You wanna be able to bridge that gap, right? That we talked about earlier on. So what you wanna do is you wanna create a highly valuable content piece that has an introductory, unique, compelling offer that you give them within that piece of content. That's one of the best ways to be able to build it. Think about it, is it is a 30 second or 60 second ad that sell, sell, sell your product or service gonna get more response? Or is something where you're saying, I have an ultimate value, this resource that you get absolutely free, you go on, there's no catch. Are you gonna get more traffic from that or are you getting more traffic from that? You think about it, obviously people are gonna visit the second option because they're already bombarded with a ton of people trying to get them to buy all the time, everywhere, all throughout the world, on Facebook, on YouTube. They're bombarded with all these messages that want them to buy stuff. If you're able to have an advantage using a unique hook, giving them that unique valuable piece of content, and you don't even talk about the offer, all you have to do is to subtly include a introductory offer for the first time uh, customers are going to your website, then you're able to do this. I'm doing this the same thing for myself as well, except I have no product on the Digital Marketing University. I'm essentially getting them to go on Digital Marketing University, they can watch the videos, they can train their team, they can watch videos like this to be able to build their business online and there's literally no catch. So they can go on there, there's webinars, guides and everything and I do the same thing. So you can do it exactly the same way as well where you have one page on your site or one content piece, you don't have to create like a Digital Marketing University or whatever university for your website because it takes so much time but you can create something simple, a one page thing where you just have very one video, a piece of content that adds value to them and it solves a problem that they have or achieves the result that they want. And then you'll be able to reach out to them through that messaging on the influences and the partnerships to get them onto your website and have them discover more about your brand. And you, you're gonna get an endorsement from the partnerships as well, so that's a plus. So that's what you wanna focus on first. Don't make the mistake of trying to sell, sell, sell like 99% of businesses do, but add value to them first. Now, once you've had these eight to 10 core partnerships, you have that messaging in place, you have that piece of valuable content with the introductory offer in that content. Then what we wanna do is we wanna amplify everything. We wanna use digital advertising to be able to remarket to them across all the different platforms that your target audience already focuses on. So remarketing is a sample, for example, in a nutshell, you go on the web, someone goes on your website, then they're gonna be able to see the messaging of whatever introductory offer that you had, again, or another piece of content. So you're gonna switching between A, another piece of content, to engage with them to build value, another piece of video, 
And then B, you're gonna have another offer, introductory offer, reminding them of the offer and they follow them around across the web. Right, so you can use this through Facebook. It's one of the most popular ways, Facebook's advertising platform. The second one you can use is through YouTube. You can use a video to remarket to them as well. Third one you can do is you can use Instagram. You can use all the social platforms. Two of the other platforms that you can use too, you can use AdRoll. You can use native advertising platforms like Taboola. You can use uh, Outbrain. You can use so many different platforms from native, from social, to be able to remarket to your target audience and bring them back and remind them of another piece of content to add value or introductory offer from your business. Now, don't worry about the technical side of these remarketing ads and all this stuff. It might sound complicated and technical. On these platforms, they already have simplified, great user experience ad builders that you can use, or if you don't know how to use those, they'll assign account reps to help you build your ads and get the most ROI on the money that you're spending to amplify everything that we just talked about. And one of the core reasons I didn't mention why remarketing is so powerful is because the amount of frequency and the amount of times that your target audience sees about your business online, the messaging that you're giving them and also the offer, the compelling offer, the more trust that we're building and the more value that we're adding to them, especially if we're using multiple different angles to be able to get them. So that's what I mean right here. Remember the gap that I was talking about where you have the price and then you have the value? The more frequently they see you, the more this is gonna go up and the less friction they have from taking the harder own money and buying your introductory offer of your product or your service. So you wanna make sure that offer is very compelling, but this is what it does. This is why the biggest brands in the world spend literally billions of dollars every single year to show their messaging, to show their ad, show their brand, their logo everywhere in magazines and billboards, on TV, on bus ads, on posters all across the city, online, following you around, is because they understand that frequency, even though it doesn't generate a direct ROI, those impressions showing to as many people as possible is gonna be able to build that trust and close this gap that we're talking about. That's one of the biggest reasons why they do it. And you can do it too, even if you don't have billions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars to spend. You can do it with a small budget of five to $10 a day on the platforms that your target audience already put their attention and their focus on right away. So that's one of the instant ways to get leveraged and amplify everything that you're doing with digital advertising. Here's a secret tip for you that you can use to be able to remarket to those people as part of your campaign. What we wanna do is that now that there's a large portion of potential new customers and new revenue driven onto your webpage, once you have that ultimate value page, the content, and also along with the introductory offer, it's normal that there's gonna be more than 50% of people that are not gonna buy and take you up on that offer. What we wanna do once you've incorporated remarketing, one of the most effective ways to be able to do this is to be able to incorporate a video testimonial of a potential customer or client after they bought your product or your service. You want them to demonstrate and share with them why did they take the lead? Why did they spend money and take your introductory offer? Why did they move to the next step of the relationship with your business? You place that video, you let the target audience that's already bought with you, speak to those strangers, those new cu potential customers that don't know anything about you, but they came from an influencer that you partnered up with. This is one of the most effective ways to be able to generate conversions from your remarketing advertisement once someone goes on your page. One of my favorite lines that you know is rinse and repeat. And that's exactly what we're gonna do once we've figured out that one authority piece of content, that partnership that's moving onto that page and driving traffic of your target audience there, and then they're seeing your introductory offer. What we wanna do is we wanna introduce the second authority piece of content with your introductory offer, and then the third one. We wanna find three of these that we can test to your target audience and see which one gets the best conversion rate, which one builds the most trust, which one adds the most value, which one cultivates a relationship faster, and which one gets the most opt-ins as well. Because one of the core things that we wanna do is we wanna find the proven way to be able to consistently do this over time and amplify this with digital advertising. So once we've decided on just that one thing, let's add one more, another one. Once you have three, you run three digital advertising campaigns that amplifies this entire process and you're gonna have a repeatable, profitable system that's gonna get your new strangers that don't know anything about you to go onto the page, learn about your business, get value and potentially buy your introductory offer. And then if they don't like that, you send them to another one and another one. You have so many different verticals, so many different angles to be able to convert 
your new target audience into actual buyers and customers. With that entire process I just shared with you, I had businesses tell me that they started with $50 to $100 a day on these exact campaigns and followed the exact process and they made tons of money. They were profitable right away on day one. Now, of course, it depends on your budget, your business size, and the stage that you're at, and also how long it takes for you to set up that piece of content, and set up the campaigns, and your resources, how many team members you have to do this for you. But one of the great things is that you don't have to spend 50 to $100 a day. You can start with five and $10 on most of these platforms, combine them, whatever your budget is, this works. You can test with a small budget, and then start slowly scaling up from there. After you find what works once you start getting numbers. So don't worry about having to spend a ton of money. You can start with very little of the budget that you have and see results and start scaling that up. Now I wanted to keep this video very simple and very straightforward for you so you can understand how to convert new strangers that know nothing about your business into customers and have a process that you can consistently use over and over again that's proven to work in multiple different products, industries, and target audiences. But I don't want you to get overwhelmed by this whole thing. There's gonna be an expanded post on digitalmarketinguniversity.com that's gonna lay it out for you step by step. It's gonna give you even more than what I walk you through in this video. Otherwise, this would be a one hour, two hour video. And there's a lot more that you can do to personalize it for your business. But I wanted to share with you the simple process first. On the post, actually on the DMU, you'll be able to see the whole thing. Overwhelm isn't gonna help you, it's not gonna help me and moving forward and getting results in your business online. Now the next step that we wanna do is I want you to understand that there's also two core revenue pillars that I mentioned that's even more important than new revenue. The first one is recurring revenue and retention. Getting your existing customers to buy over and over again, refer even more people to your business is how you ultimately build a successful business. And plus ascension revenue, how you get your existing customers to buy more of the product extension or the lines that you have or partnerships with existing businesses that already have proven products or services that you can use and leverage off and combine together. So these two, you can watch them. They already have videos on the Digital Marketing University on betsasun.com and you can see how to integrate all three of these revenue pillars in your business for maximum success online. And at the same time, what I want you to do, comment below and let me know what is your most favorite way, what is the one way they're using right now to be able to generate new revenue, new customers in your business? And I'll give you feedback, I'll let you know, or if you have any questions as well, you can comment below right now and I'll respond personally to the questions that you actually type in there. So comment below. The second thing is I want you to like this video, let me know that you like this piece of content, you're enjoying it, you're getting value from it. I'm recording this video because I wanna add value to you from where I'm at right now. I don't have any products to sell you. I have nothing to sell you. This is just to build a brand and also add value to you. The third thing is I want you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure that you are part of the fast growing YouTube community for entrepreneurs to grow their business online. So subscribe right there. You can see my face. Hit that right there. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.